Free Flight Vision Scene 1. Patient Potter I was in a small potter's hut. I was standing in a corner watching an old wise potter seated at a potter's wheel. He was covered in wet clay and bent over some fresh clay he had just put on the center of the round stone wheel. The wheel began to turn and the potter splashed muddy water on the clay and began to shape the formless lump. I saw soft light coming in through the open window and I could hear birds chirping outside and whispers of the early morning mountain breeze. As the stone wheel spun, the potter carefully, patiently shaped and molded this clay into a simple, beautiful masterpiece. Then the potter tenderly lifted the clay pot off the stone wheel and held it in the fire next to him. The potter was always there, present and intentional. He never took his eyes off the pot, whether it was a lump of formless clay or being heated and sealed in flame. At the perfect time, the potter removed with iron tongs the hot clay pot and set it on the stone fireplace to cool. Scene 2. Careless Potters I began to hear clattering noises outside of our potter's stone hut. The noises sounded unnatural, like something was being broken over and over again. I went outside through the front door and followed a short path from his home to the top of a mountain ridge. As I reached the ridge, I heard the noises coming from down the mountain slope. I saw other stone huts along the mountain ridge sloping down along the forest edge. Men came out of their homes at different times, holding little clay pots in their hands. When they reached the ridge, they tossed each pot into the air and turned away without watching them fall. I watched these small pots fall to the rocks below. As they reached the rocks, they smashed into dozens of broken shards. I watched in horror this abysmal scene repeat over and over and over. When the potters returned to their huts, they remained inside only for a short time before they came out with another pot to throw off the mountain to be dashed on the rocks below. The potters would not watch the clay pots fall and be destroyed. My heart was broken and I knew something was very wrong, but all I could do was stand and observe these potters casting out the very pots that they created. I wept. Scene 3, Cherished Creation. Suddenly, I was back inside our patient potter's hut. He pulled out some colorful pottery paint and ceiling glaze. He painted a nature scene with beautiful colors upon the freshly heated pot's warm surface and sealed the bright colors with glaze. Then he held up the pot in his hand. The surface captured the sunlight shining through the windows and sparkled. This craftsman had transformed a dull, formless lump into a marvelous, reflective masterpiece. Our potter was smiling with heartfelt joy as he held up the finished pot to the light and turned it around in his hands to watch the light reflecting off his completed creation. Scene 4. Life Transformation Then our master potter walked outside the hut and took the short path to the top of the mountain ridge holding his new pot. I followed him fearful of what he might have planned for his pot because of what I had witnessed the other potters doing. Yet, I felt oddly at peace in my heart that this potter was different than the others and that I could trust him. When he reached the mountain ridge, he held the pot gently in his hands, bowed his head in prayer, and spoke a blessing over the pot. 
Then, with one smooth motion, he threw the pot as high into the air as he could. For a brief moment, I was devastated, because I thought our potter that I had come to know and love turned out to be like the other potters. But something happened that I didn't expect. As the beautiful clay pot fell through the air towards the ground, it transformed into a magnificent falcon. Her wings caught the wind, and she soared high above us. I stood with our potter watching the falcon fly free. A brilliant smile brimming with delight appeared upon his wise old face, a joy overflowing from deep places in his heart. His arms were raised in celebration, and he danced as the falcon flew in circles high above us. Scene 5. Free Flight Then the potter pointed towards a distant mountain range beyond the valley of rocks and shattered pottery pieces that I had not seen before. The falcon took one last look at the potter, then glided towards the distant mountain range until she disappeared beyond the horizon. We were no longer on the mountain ridge, but appeared now in a valley. I saw twelve beautiful pots, each with a unique creation design, and a slow-moving river flowing towards us from the mountains, the streams underneath our feet. Comforting peace and fresh hope filled my heart. Free Flight Vision Interpretation Anyone who has an ear, let them hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to our churches today. Revelation 2, verse 7 Scene 1, Patient Potter The potter is our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The clay pot is one of God's children, one of His adopted sons and daughters. The stone hut is the safe refuge of His glory and holy presence. The stone wheel is time. The fireplace is discipline and suffering. The pottery paint and sealant are our divine design, our spiritual gifts, and life passions. Listen to Psalms 139, verses 13 to 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. <clears throat> Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Scene 2. Careless Potters The other potters are impatient spiritual leaders. The pots they throw are disciples they have only spent a little, unfruitful time developing. The broken pot shards are new believers who have never learned to seek time with the true potter and are broken by trials and suffering. The valley is despair, and the valley's rocks are the disappointments disciples experience when someone begins to teach them and then leaves them prematurely without shepherding and caring with compassion for their souls. Listen to Jeremiah 23, verses 1 to 4. What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep? For they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you have deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I will pour out judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the nations where I have driven them. 
I will bring them back to their own sheepfold, and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them, and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. Scene 3. Cherished Creation The potter enjoying the pot illustrates God's love for every person. The nature seen outside reflecting upon the pot's surface illustrates how God displays His glory and majesty in our lives through our unique destinies and the gifts and wisdom of His kingdom that we receive and embrace. Listen to Isaiah 54, verses 11 to 17. Poor Jerusalem, storm-tossed and not comforted, I will set your stones in black mortar and lay your foundations in lapis lazuli. I will make your fortifications out of rubies, your gates out of sparkling stones. Then all your children will be taught by the Lord. Their prosperity will be great, and you will be established on a foundation of righteousness. You will be far from oppression. You will certainly not be afraid. You will be far from terror. It will certainly not come near you. If anyone attacks you, it is not from me. Whoever attacks you will fall before you. Look, I have created the craftsman who blows on the charcoal fire and produces a weapon suitable for its task. And I have created the destroyer to cause havoc. No weapon formed against you will succeed, and you will refute any accusation raised against you in court. This is the heritage of the Lord's servants, and their vindication is from me. This is the Lord's declaration. Scene 4. Life Transformation The man tossing the pot off the cliff illustrates how God creates humankind in His image. We are free to make our own choices, to worship and love God, or to reject and rebel against Him. The pot transforming into a falcon illustrates the rebirth we experience as new creations in the trustworthy hands of our affectionate Creator. Listen to Ezekiel 36, verses 24 to 28. For here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you out of these countries, gather you from all over, and bring you back to your own land. I'll pour pure water over you and scrub you clean. I'll give you a new heart put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God-willed, not self-willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. You'll once again live in the land I gave your ancestors. You'll be my people. I'll be your God. Scene 5 free flight. The open hand releasing the falcon to fly freely illustrates how we bring glory and honor to God as His creation when we embrace the freedom He has given us through His Messiah, Jesus Christ, and we walk in His freedom. The mountain range illustrates the nations, particularly unreached and unengaged places and peoples today. The river flowing towards us illustrates how the Holy Spirit is Lord of the harvest, and He is already moving in power among all forgotten places and forsaken tribes, preparing these lands and peoples to hear and believe in Jesus. The twelve pots and the different designs illustrate the balance and fullness of the kingdom of heaven in our midst when we walk in freedom and celebrate diversity. 
being champions for one another's unique designs rather than trying to conform others to our personal preferences or opinions. Listen to Psalms 91. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because you have set your love upon me, therefore I will deliver you. I will set you on high, because you know my name. You shall call upon me, and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our patient potter. Thank you so much for taking such care with our lives. Thank you for ordaining all of our days before a single one of them has begun. Father, we welcome the heat and the light. We welcome the fire and the flame. We welcome the suffering and the trials, for you have told us in your word that the hidden blessing of heaven is that we share in the sufferings of our master of sorrows, that we may also share in his great glory. Heavenly Father, our hearts are broken for anyone among your people around the world who have experienced spiritual leaders that are blind and deaf to any destructive tendencies or teachings that they have. Lord, none of us are perfect. Not one of us is a perfect disciple. Not one of us is a perfect teacher. You are our good shepherd, O oh God. You are the perfect teacher. So, Father, we ask for a special blessing of mercy today upon anyone who is holding any kind of bitterness in their hearts against any other person. Because you tell us in Ephesians 6, our battle is not against flesh and blood. You tell us in 1 Corinthians 13 that love does not keep a record of wrongs. And you tell us, Lord, to keep our eyes fixed upon you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We live in a culture today, Father, in this generation where it's so much easier to follow a preacher or a teacher or a gifted leader who is not you. It is helpful to learn from others, Lord. It is helpful to, to listen to the preaching and the teaching and the ideas of others. But you have always called us from the beginning of your church to be Bereans. Bereans were praised in Scripture in the book of Acts because they never received teaching or instruction from anyone. They would listen, they would pay close attention, they would focus on the message, they would write down what they heard, but they would not receive it as from you first. They would test the spirits, they would test the revelation, they would test the message. 
They would test it in prayer. They would test it in worship. They would test it with a host of wise counselors. They would test it in the community of the saints. And anything that was from you, Lord, that you confirmed by your spirit, by your word, and by the community of your people, they would receive and embrace, believe, and put into practice. But there is accountability built into the body of Christ, whereby we do not just listen to people and believe. We listen alone to you. Just like we read earlier in Revelation 3, anyone that has an ear, let them hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Father, we thank you that you take delight in us. We thank you that you have made us in your image. We thank you that you love us and that you cherish us. You are our patient potter. You are our affectionate creator. Thank you, Lord, for reflecting your glory and your majesty and your mag- and your beauty and your mystery within us. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us freedom. Thank you for allowing us to be able to make our own choices. Thank you for releasing us into your creation so that we will return to you. That is our desire. This is the desire of our hearts, Lord, to love you with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. We do not want to live by knowledge. We do not want to live by our experiences. We want to live by the power and the presence and within the peace of your Holy Spirit. We are people of revelation. We are people of who are filled to overflowing with the love that is poured out into us and upon us and through us from heaven. Oh Lord, how you love us. And how you have a love, a deep love, an indescribable love for the forsaken places and the forgotten peoples of the world. Heavenly Father, anyone that is watching this video and anyone who will watch this video until the return of Jesus is watching this video today because you have not yet returned. So, Father, we want to be like this falcon who flies freely with your blessing and anointing into the unreached and unengaged places of all the harvest fields of all the world. Today, we lift up to you every tribe, every tongue, every people, and every nation in all regions of the world. We intercede today for North America and South America, for Europe and for Africa and the Middle East, for Russia for Central Asia, for South Asia, for Southeast Asia, for East Asia, for Oceania, for all the seafaring peoples of the world and for all the people whose bodies are on earth but their hearts are in the stars. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have a destiny to help people understand and to receive, to embrace, and to live out. And Holy Spirit, we cherish this picture of you already at work in dark places and difficult hearts. Thank you that by your spirit of resurrection, you give us new hearts and new spirits so that we can walk in the Holy Spirit rather than in the will of our own minds. Lord God, thank you for setting us free. Thank you for breaking our chains. Thank you for destroying our shackles. Thank you for seating us at favored places at your wedding banquet feast. We love you, we praise you, and we make a fresh covenant with you to walk in freedom because your perfect love drives out all fear and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We pray a free flight blessing over this generation today. In Jesus' name and for his greater glory among all peoples and places and nations we pray, amen. Thank you for watching our Blazing Trees videos. And thank you so much for all the love, prayers, and generosity. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus.